So my name is Maxim Nietzsche. Uh, together with my brother Raphael, we uh, started a company called Kogeon, where we uh, did math, for the app uh, called Math42 for middle and high school students, where we allowed them to understand math step by step. Um, we consider us both founders, don't have any titles, don't call us CEOs or CTO, um, and, and do everything together. Uh, so my brother and I started the company three and a half years ago when we were 14 and 15 uh, because we gave a lot of private math tutoring and knew that every student had the same problem and that was math. That did, didn't depend on which country they were in, in Germany or Brazil, everyone has the same problem. So what we did is give them a solution, an app uh, that gives you suggestions on how you could start with the problem, how you could solve it, explains you everything step by step, allows you to do tests, to do training exercises, to visualize everything, to get explanations, and so to understand math. And right now I have around 100,000 users. So that's a that's benchmark, of course, always in the app business, the 100K, uh, which we're very happy to have reached, that we only will release a product when it's perfect the Apple philosophy. And you see what happens to an Apple employee when they don't release a perfect product, uh, Maps. Um, the thing is that we did something more complex than anything you could ever imagine, I think. It's really rocket science. Microsoft tried it and they failed. Wolf Wolfram Alpha tried it and they only presented a part, part solution. You have to understand that even if it looks simple, it's deeply, deeply complex and complicated problem that we had to solve. And even with uh, the help of our father, who, who did a lot of stuff, who was computer chess world champion, uh, who did a search engine technology, he said that this was one of the most complex things he he's ever seen. That's why it took us that long. To really be able to present everything step by step. What we do is, when you have a solution, we show you every step of the way, every subset of the way. What you have to do is to present, to look, to be able to look at everything, to be able to write, the, the program has to write everything, has to think step by step to be able to present it that way. This whole structure is really complicated. The design to present something as complex as math in an easy and intuitive way, that's an enormous task that we had to solve. And that's this whole consortium of problems took us three years. That's, that's why it took that long. What we did, we developed everything on our own. Even the, how the formulas are traced, we did everything on our own. Um, also the tracing, where you see everything is smooth and, and beautiful, we did it on our own. Uh, because if you take open source packages, it may be faster in the, in the short term, but in the long term you will have a lot of problem if you want to implement new functions because you have to understand it and that's not always given if you take other stuff. You as a developer and engineer will know that. Uh, the solutions are generated automatically. The exercise on the other hand is a whole different story uh, because if you want to generate good exercises, you have, you have to do it almost individually. Um, of course, we have a lot of AI behind that. We can, we, right now there are over 300,000 exercises in this. Um, of course, there is a lot of AI behind that, how we generate them. Uh, but in the end, it was a lot of hard work to, to be able to do this. Uh, right now, my brother is 17, I'm 18. Uh, so even in the startup business, I, I think we're pretty young. Uh, but uh, because of my father, who always was in this business, always uh, uh, in, the, in the raising funds, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Uh, we we know this fear and the scene for for quite some time. Since we were six, we were in the in the other room and listened to our father present something, and and then looked at the funding of his first company, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So even if we're 18 and 17, you could say that we have 12 years of ex experience in the field, which is ridiculous. <laughs> It's, it's, it's a difficult answer uh, because uh, Rafael is still going to school and, and studying math at the same time. He's doing his last 
three months right now of prison. Uh, no, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, and I'm uh, studying mathematics, economics, and philosophy on the, on the side because it's this whole project or company has been so time consuming because you have to travel a lot, you have to talk to a lot of people, you have to develop by the way, you have to be prepared when you talk to people. It's ex extremely time cons consuming and that basically means that uh, we do our homework for, for school or for university and go to into uh, the exams and that's, that's it. We, we don't really go into university. It's too time, time consuming and our priority right now is really to help more people, to give uh, more people to the access to, uh, to, to education. So basically our mission and vision is really to democratize education worldwide. It's ambitious. Yeah, it, of course it is. It has to be. If you want to set it, if you want to change something, you have to be ambitious, I think. Uh, the other three are um, developers, uh, uh, the wife of my father did the whole website um, and of course as it gets bigger you know that um, you cannot do everything on your own. You have to, to really uh, tell, tell other guys to do tasks that you cannot, that you could do but you don't have the time to. So basic, uh, basically developers and uh, designers etc. Uh, right now we're we're in the middle of of, uh, of raising the first the first round. Uh, we're talking with uh, a lot of VCs, strategic partners, publishers, angels. Um, that's what I mean with time consuming. <laughs> when I'm talking about time consuming tasks, those are those talks. The other stuff is is what we love is to develop, to be creative, to 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 really give you new stuff. Talking to investors and to angels is a different story. You know it as well. Um, and that's what we're doing right now when uh, we'll be leaving for, for the US in quite some time and to London to, to talk to, to, to new people. There are two points. Uh, firstly, um, when, you, when you look at Germany and the VCs in Germany, I'd say that the mindset is completely different from those in, in the UK and in, in the US because the wave of something new is first to arrive in the US and the UK. The VCs are, are way faster there. They're way faster to switch their, their focal point. And in Germany, um, people look at, at companies in a very conservative way. They, they don't go that much for the product or, or what has been achieved but only look at superficial, uh, superficial um, uh, stuff, and that's that's why it's way easier to raise funds uh, outside of Germany, outside of Europe, in the UK or in the US, uh, because they are more open-minded, more open-minded to new technology, um, and the funds are higher. The ra that's all. That's everyone knows it. When you raise in the US, you'll always always almost always raise more than you would raise in Germany. It depends on, on what is expected, uh, but right now we'll, we'll raise between 1.8 and 3.1 uh, million um, because with the new, new product and, and new intentions we have um, and how we want to broaden everything up, you will need that kind of money. Uh, everyone, everyone knows it. If you want to make great products if you want to really pick it up to the next level. You have, you have to have the, the, the money, you have to have the persons who can do it. It depends on what's expected, it depends on, on what you want. Uh, if, if you want to relocate maybe to the US, uh, it costs a lot of money. We have had, my father has had the experience uh, when he moved to San Francisco in 2008. Um, we know how time consuming relocating uh, a company as we know how money consuming this is uh, and depending on the funds and depending on what the VC or angel or investor or whatever expects uh, that's what we will do and depending on what's best for the company. Well there are, there are funny 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 reactions of course uh, because it's it's very strange for an 18 year old to say uh, to other guys who say yeah do you want to go out on Friday and say yeah, 
wait, look me, let me look at my schedule. No, um, it's, it's difficult to handle uh, because if, if you do only do the one thing, uh, you, you don't have any social life. And for your inner self, that's very important. So always keep time for yourself because in the end, if, you, if you're three weeks on the road and, and don't do anything other than meetings, you'll be crushed. And that, that's what we feel after three, three weeks somewhere else. And, but if you do only the social things, if you only go to conferences, etc., the, the thing where you get the nice food, free food, free, free drinks, that's, that's always nice. Uh, but the, the company won't go, f uh, won't go a lot further with this. So you always have to, to keep it balanced. Yeah, the most stupid thing is maybe one, also one of the biggest learnings is that never think that it will take as much time as you plan for it to, to, to take. We planned for six months. It took five times that time. Um, so I think that that's naivety, uh, naivety from, from our side. And it was stupid to think that such a big project could be done. And so we don't have stupid expenses. We have stupid ideas that we try to fulfill that don't get done. So maybe stupid time expenses, but we don't have any stupid expenses. Uh, but I think uh, the spirit of solving problems, to do new things, to develop own things. Uh, we, we're very privileged to be in a family where this is highly regarded and, and highly seen. And um, of course our father helps us, uh, his wife, everyone in this family works with this. Uh, me, the, the biggest media echo was in Germany because we knew a few people here. Um, that's why I think we, we, we had the, the biggest success in Germany. Uh, but I think because we're targeting, uh, targeting a problem that is universal, one plus one is the same in Germany, in France, in China, in Brazil. We don't, have, we don't really have this problem of different cultures. Uh, so I think it's only a problem of marketing and PR. Uh, but up until now, I think it's Germany and the US. Students, kids, parents and teachers. And we thought that teachers would hate us. But those are the people who have been the most euphoric about the app. Because our app basically takes a, a shitload of work from their shoulders. And that is correcting tests, uh, have, having to, uh, to calculate everything. Those things can be took from, their, from them, from machines or from programs like ours. And I think a lot of students are our customers because most, most, most of them are students because we're, we're solving their problem. A lot of parents are our customers because there are a lot of parents who want to help their kids on their own, but they don't have the knowledge or the skills to do that. They have to, uh, to, to get a private tutor, a private tutor to help their kids. And through our app, they can look at the homework of their kids, see, ah, okay, here, here's the step you did it wrong, or maybe you should, this, this should do it this way. They can look at explanations and understand it with their children. So I think everyone is our customer, but the most important and biggest group are our students. Uh, there are too many ideas that have, too many problems that have to be solved to sit on the beach. Uh, never. Why? If you have the means to do something, why don't do it? It's ridiculous. I don't understand a single person who has the means to sit on the beach all day long who does that. Of course you have to tame take, uh, take your time out. But if you have the means to help people, to bring new products to life, why waste that time? The company that provides every student, every parent, every teacher, every school, every school district on this planet a solution for math, for the biggest problem in school that everyone knows Math42, that everyone will use it because for now it's the only solution in this domain. Uh, the Hitchhiker's Guide Through the Galaxy from Douglas Adams. And uh, the story to, to the name is also quite funny. We thought we, we had a completely different name and when we wanted to give it into the App Store, uh, we, ha we had looked at it and we, we didn't see it anywhere. And then we were told, yeah, this name already exists. So we had five hours. To, to find a new name. 
and uh, that's when the, the name was a bit longer. Uh, then that's when we thought about this. Oksana said, "Isn't there a number in this book that that's the answer to everything?" So that's great because what we want to do is really to be the answer to every problem you have in math, and that's where it comes from. Right now, we have to transport the message to the outside world. And that's, that's where we're hiring into, uh, yeah, marketing, PR, uh, guys and, uh, and girls who, who understand how to do this. Uh, because I think um, we know exactly what we're doing. I love, to present my, uh, I love to present our company. I love to present myself. I, I love to talk in front of a lot of people. But when it comes to PR and marketing, I'm not the big, best guy for it because you have to know the, the field. You have to know the people. And I don't do it. And I, I can't do it. Maybe the one that, that, that influenced me the most was Good Lescherbach by Hofstetter. Uh, because it's, t it's talking a lot of, about AI and mathematics and, and art at the same time. Um, it's, it's difficult. Uh, there's a, a book called Against All Odds from Goldstein, I think, which is about uh, how this whole um, yeah, look at, at math and, and risk risk evaluation started and, and where it got uh, is, is very well displayed and um, maybe f for me and, and, and for everyone else the most important book that might be strange uh, is from Jean-Jacques Rousseau the philosopher and the book is called uh, Emilou de l'Education uh, it's a book about education and um, about the problem of mass uh, of, of education being a mass product because Education is only effective if it's taught individually. If it's taught to every student depending on his needs and his understanding, his knowledge. And that's, that's basically how, how this whole concept of the steps of explaining it to every student depending on what he understood uh, and, and what he needs to understand came from, from this book. Um, interesting fact, every, every teacher in Japan has to read it before being able to teach. Uh, so th that's maybe the book I'd recommend the most, with, with Goethe Schabach, of course. Uh, maybe my opinion on, on today's education is a catastrophe, because it doesn't prepare anyone to the life that, that is out there. It's a system that hasn't changed in the past hundred years, so it will have to change. In what direction? Teachers will have tools, programs like ours, that will change their position. I think you will never completely eliminate teachers. Uh, I think that a human is always important because it has another way of, of teaching of things, an, another way of understanding kids. But I think that, for example, if you look at emerging countries, a teacher through tools like ours won't be able to, to teach maybe 20 kids, but 90, 160 kids. And the function of the teacher will probably be changed from the teacher who has to correct tests, who has to uh, prepare exercises. Um, this whole thing that is very time consuming will be taken away from him. And he will, his position from dumb teacher will change to intelligent coach that looks, looks up a, a, a student's profile. So, okay, ah, he, he's got a problem there will go to every student individually, because now he has the time to do this, and say, shouldn't I explain it to you maybe in another way, within our approach? And, and I think that's how it will change. Uh, I think also what, what will be taught will be changed. If you look at Code Academy, I think there will be much more in this direction, much more coding, maybe re real life applications. Uh, less theoretical also when it comes to math of course you have to understand the theoretical basis but then being able to have the time to prepare real-life applications is a task that teachers today cannot complete but through apps like ours will be able to complete that's my opinion you cannot have a system last for a hundred years and not ch not change it's, it's ridiculous. Every, everything changes around us, but not, not the education system? That's ridiculous. 
That's not a way to go. And the problem is, what we thought, okay, we have two ways of changing it. Either we go into politics and good luck with corruption, won't be able to, to achieve anything. The, the power of the corporates is too, too great. Or provide every single one with someone that will help them to change it bottom up, not top down. And that's, that's also a motivation to change something in the education system. We're a paid app, and from the start, we were a paid app. We didn't have any. And that's why iOS made off. That's one of the things why iOS. Because those, the people who have iOS are much more willing to pay. So in, I think in the beginning for a company, depending on what you're trying to get, if you're trying to get massive reach, be for free on all platforms. If you want to grow, at the same time be able to develop new things and sustainable, you have to, to earn money. And that's, that's why. That's why iOS, that's why, why the price. Uh, a business model from, from the start that stays the same or that goes down, you'll earn a shitstorm if you, if you change it to something else. And that's what we got when we implemented inner purchases. Even if the functionality was completely different, we, earned it. we got a shitstorm of, of replies like, how can you charge for exercises? They don't look at that, how, how much work and effort we put into to make this into place and w that we have to be sustainable. But that's why we took them out. We learned our lesson. And now we have, I think in the German abstract, five out of five stars. Uh, in, in the reviews, overall at four, four and a half stars out of five, over 350 reviews. So the feedback is amazing. At the beginning, we weren't taken seriously at all. Seven, as a, we, we're 17, 16, now 18, 17. You don't take, get taken seriously in a world like this. And it has a perk. You're always underestimated. And we played chess. When we were kids, we were, I don't know, eight and nine, and we played against, I don't know, guys that were 40 years old, you always get underestimated. But that's the best place ever to be in. Because you only, that's a, that's a thing, never overpromise and underdeliver. Always underpromise and overdeliver. And that's, that was, the underpromise was done for us. Because with our age and what we did, you only, only can get underestimated. If you start to get the, the, the progress and the success we had, have had right now, that's a different story. But we still get uh, underestimated, and that's a, lo a lovely position to be in, because you only can over-deliver. Um, so that, it's always a funny experience. Uh, I remember the, the, the first times we or very, very strange, uh, because of that, that's it. Uh, and the conversation always goes like this. You come there, you say, and then they say, yeah, are you the math kids, the math, the math nerds, or something like this? And then you show the product, and then you tell the success, and then you tell them what feedback you got. And then they look at you in another light and take you seriously. Very, very, very seriously. And that's... Uh, that, that's, that's funny, and right now, I don't know, we had a lot of VC meetings, but right, we're in a growth phase right now. That means that we, we have to be picky about VCs, and we have said no to a lot of VCs that, that were very interested in us. And right now, we haven't found a fit, but we're, we're in talks with very, very big VCs that are very interested, and it's, it's difficult to, to see where to go, to see which one fits which, uh, to see who has the best network. And now is the most important thing. The, the no, most important time, if you want to have a VC in this phase that we're in, you have to, be, to have a perfect fit. Because if you don't have, he'll destroy you. I don't believe in emailing business plans to VC. I think most of the time, uh, through connections, through being on conferences, 
uh, and if you if you have meet them, met them once face to face on a conference, for example, for us the most important conference was the TechCrunch Disrupt in Berlin in October. I think it was in October. When you have that this one time, that's your chance. That's your window. It's a horrible time to to try to to find funding. Autumn, horrible. I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend it. But um, I think go on to those conferences, talk to other people, talk to other uh, other uh, entrepreneurs that that have had success and know people, and ask them. Do you, do you think to to the entrepreneurs? Do you think what what I do is is all right? Is cool? Is uh, does it? If they do, then they will be more likely to introduce you to other VCs, but that, because they have a important connection and they won't give it up that easily. And if if they present someone that they don't believe in, that could be the ruin for for the relationship because that that will be spamming. So you have to find those guys that believe in you, and we have we have had a few. And that's that's how you get interest. You have to network all the time. Most of the time they aren't. Most of the time they aren't. TechCrunch disrupt, is it? We had a lot of conferences in the U.S. and here in the U.K. and Germany. Horrible waste of time. Don't go there. If there is a big one, the biggest one, that's where you want to be, because the VC, when VCs go there, that's it's their job. They have they don't want to miss out on something. They have a fear to miss out on something. You have to present there. You have to get 20 seconds to five minutes of their attention. And then if they believe in you, if they believe in your team or whatever, or if you have a product that, that blows their mind, then it's all right. Uh, but I think it's always, it's not that important for VCs, but it's very important to, to get connections to other entrepreneurs who have done this before. I am. I am. Definitely I am. I know them very well. I know Florian uh, Meissner and Genza Rakan and Ramsey Risk and, uh, and Lorenz Ashoff. I love those guys uh, because they have done something that I, I, I'd consider almost impossible. Uh, monetize a community of 10 million people that they put up for free. Have 10 million downloads of the app on iOS. That's amazing. That's almost impossible. But then to monetize it, that's another, that's another story. That's why they have everyone who's in the business, every investor wants to invest. That's why. And, and right now they announced new deals. They're in the deal with Getty. If I had the money, I am.